Hello, I'm Jerry Martin Gibson of the CSA. Uh, I wanted to do this teaching sermon for you here. For years, I've put together, studied the Word of God and uh, to understand it. A lot of people don't understand the Word of God. Uh, they don't know where it starts, where it begins, where, who is God, what's He like. So I wanted to go through these. God deals with men in dispensations. A dispensation is the way God deals with man. And in each dispensation, man fails miserably. In every one of them. Every one God, every opportunity God gives them, they fail. So I wanted to take this and give you an outline to where you can know uh, Jesus rejoiced and said, I thank thee, Father, that thou hast hid thy word from the wise and the prudent and revealed it unto babes. You know how, how a babe will get it? Because they have 100% faith in, in the information they get. And that's what I have in a King James Bible. I have 100% faith that it is the word of God, that God wanted the English-speaking people to have. It is God's words. So, where we start, most people start in Genesis 1, in the beginning. Well, that ain't the beginning. The beginning is God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. So I bring you this sermon called From Alpha to Omega. Uh, so to get the very beginning, you will have to go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was of God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible and a lot of the Catholic Bibles have inserted the letter A. He was a God to make him look like a created God by a higher God. Let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was of God and the Word was God. They want to change that, but the next verse gets sentence gets them. The same was in the beginning with God. So if he was in the beginning with God, he was one third of the Godhead Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Everything that exists, exists in three parts. It has no existence at all. So what happened? I used to wonder, how could you not have a beginning? Well, space don't. God settled that with me a long time ago. And if you see some of our sermons, www.gibzone.net, see some of our sermons, you'll see what you, what you need to know on that. So, in the beginning was God. He has no beginning. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they've always been there. They always will be. Just because you can't understand it don't mean it isn't so. Uh, God's mind is not like your mind. Thank God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost created before mankind. How many million, how many billion years ago? I don't know. But it was before the creation of man. They created the archangels, the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and uh, the beasts that surrounded the throne that praised God 24 hours a day. They created these and they had all sorts of knowledge, common sense. There were five cherubim in the beginning. There were five. Now there are four. I'll tell you why there's only four now. Uh, the cherubim, if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 10, you'll find out the cherubim, they had four faces. The face of a man, the face of a lion, the face of a knox, and the face of an eagle. Now, each one of those represents uh, an animal. Uh, the, the man, not that's, man ain't an animal, but a lion is a wild animal. The ox, the domesticated animal, and the eagle, the fowl of the air. Uh, notice there's no reptilian, there's no amphibian, no snake, <laughs> none of that. Well, guess who was that? That was the fifth cherub, that anointed cherub, Lucifer, who now deposed is called Satan or the devil. All right, so you have four cherubim. Uh, when you go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll find out that there's three heavens. There's no seven heavens, there's three heavens. The heaven above your head is the first heaven, what you can see. The solar system is the second heaven, separated by the deep. Above that is the third heaven, the abode of God. Find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul tells you that. Well, God had created the cherubim, the seraphim, the angels, the archangels, and uh, Lucifer 
If you go to Ezekiel, you'll find out God calls him the king of Tyrus. He calls him many things throughout the Bible. But if you'll find out, he was the anointed cherub that covered. To find that out, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. Well, Lucifer said in his heart, go over to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12 through 15, you'll find out why he lost his authority as the anointed cherub that covered the throne of God. Because five times he said in his heart, I will. He said, I will ascend into the sides of the north, into the congregation. I will be like the most high God. He said, I will five times. Iniquity was found in his heart. God cast him down. He cast him out of his... Now, let me tell you, we have drawn one. Uh, Jake drew a picture of it. But the earth isn't always where it used to be. Uh, in the beginning, when Lucifer was the anointed chair of the covered, the earth was sitting in the deep in the third heaven. And when God deposed him as his rulership and cast him out of the third heaven into the second and first heaven and the earth... Uh, he drowned out everything that was on that earth. Were there dinosaurs? Probably so. How many million years? I don't know, but you don't either. Uh, I don't doubt there were dinosaurs, but it was when the, uh, the cherub called Lucifer was the ruler of the earth and was the leader of the music in heaven and covered the throne of God. Now, when he decided he would be equal to God or better than God, God cast him out of the third heaven. Okay, with him, Lucifer took a third of the angels. They believed in him. Why? Because he was the most beautiful, most knowledgeable, wiser than Solomon. He had it going on. But he decided he would be better than his creator or equal to his creator. That never happens. And you little TV evangelists thinking you are, you're nothing. Nations are as a grain of salt, so you're nothing. Well, he gets cast out. All amphibian life was destroyed. How much time passed between that and when God recreated the earth? I don't know. He didn't say. God has no... Uh, time doesn't rule God. God created time. Time didn't create God. He is eternal. He is an eternal being. Something you ain't going to understand until you see eternity. I understand it because I got His Word and I believe it. Okay, after a certain amount of time passed, the earth was without form and void. It had been destroyed. It had been wiped out. Everything on it was dead. And God looked around at the angels and the archangels and the cherubim and the seraphim and they said, let's create man. Let's create, let's create the earth. Let there be light. So when you go from there, you go to Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, in the beginning of what? Well, it wasn't in the beginning of God. Well, I've done one over that with you. He is the beginning. In the beginning of mankind, God created the heaven and earth. In the beginning of the record of mankind that he created. Genesis 1, 1 through 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God went ahead and created all the plant life. He took... The waters that were above the firmament from the waters that were below the firmament. The waters above the firmament are called the deep. The waters that were below the firmament. The firmament he called heaven. So that tells you there's a body of water. The great deep is above your head. Out there separating the second heaven from the third heaven. The top of it is frozen as found in Job. We well, creates animal life. He creates all the kinds of animals. Uh, he, then he created, on the sixth day, he created man. He created Adam. He created Adam on the sixth day. He brought all the animals to Adam to, to name for him. Adam named them all. He saw that Adam needed a woman and he was uh, lonesome, needed a mate. So he took from the woman, from the Adam, he took a bone, a bone from Adam the fifth rib, and he created Eve, his helpmate. Okay, there were only two people created. When people say we're created in the image of God and the likeness of God and we're all created equal, that's a lie from hell. It is not true. Only Adam and Eve were created and they were not created equal. Adam was created out of the dirt. 
His Adam means red brown, created out of the dirt. He was a Shemite. There's only three races. He was a Shemite. From his rib was created Eve. Eve was created from a rib. What color is a rib? A rib is white. Eve was Japhethite. She was white. So you have a Shemite and you have a Japhethite. This is my conclusion of the scriptures I read. Uh, from there, he put them in a garden and he said, I'm not going to tell them about good and evil. But there was a tree there. We wonder about that tree because Ezekiel, God says of Lucifer and the king of Tyre, thou wast a tree in the garden of God. What all that is, each week sneaks, as Dr. Ruckman would say, I know, I don't know. But I do know this, Satan saw the opportunity to come in. Since God cast Satan out of heaven, there has been a contention between the two of Satan saying, if you'll give me the chance, I will prove to you that you are not infallible. I will prove to you that I can be like you. And God's given him every opportunity to do it. He is not going to smack him down and give him the chance to say, if I'd have had the opportunity, I could have beat you. He's given him the opportunity, and it's written in this book right here. Everything is written in this book. Lucifer knows it. Satan knows this book from back to front. Now, God created man and woman. Uh, they were innocent. They were naked. How do you know this word of God is right? Well, it... It tells man the way it is. Every other book tries to let man look like he's really something. This book tells you man came into the world naked. A baby comes into the world naked. Uh, they crave fruit. That's what God gave them to eat, fruit. There were no vegetables. That's what a baby wants, fruit. When you tell them not to do something, that's the first thing they want to do, just like a kid, just like Adam, just like Eve. Uh, when you catch them, what do they want to do? They want to blame it on somebody else. Hey man, if you don't, the reason you don't know this is the word of God is because you haven't read it. That's about the bottom line. Now, Satan saw the chance to disrupt the apple cart, so to speak. So he comes in. I don't know where his disguise is. Tree came in disguised as a serpent. Uh, there's a lot to wonder about that. Uh, did sex play into it with Eve? I don't know. Was it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Sure is, because it said Cain was of that wicked one. Well, he got Eve to, to change the word of God. First she added two. God didn't tell her she couldn't touch, but she said that. Then she took away from the word of God. Then she doubted the word of God. Then she ate the forbidden fruit starts with and that's what your Bible correctors and revisers and your seminaries have been doing for years and years and years causing you they've been taking away adding to and causing you to doubt the Word of God that's why the church is in the miserable shape it's in today okay he got Eve to sin Adam wasn't around Eve was the one caught in the transgression but Adam loved her and he gave himself for her. and since then that's what every woman wants a man that'll die for her. Adam said, I'll die. I know God said we're going to die, so I'll die with you here. <laughs> I'll go with you. So God catches them. They deny it. You know the story. If you don't know, I can't tell you all. Read it for yourself. He cast them out of the garden. Uh, they have children. They have uh, Cain and Abel. They have children after their own likeness, in their own image, not after the image of God or the likeness of God. Chapter 5, Genesis will tell you that. Well, they, they started to bring their offerings to God. Cain brought uh, vegetables, fruit, vegetables. He knew the offering was supposed to be a lamb without spot, without blemish. It was to be a blood sacrifice. Yet he brought, he disobeyed God. He was half Shemite, half white. Okay, God rejected his offering. Abel brought the offering God asked for. God received Abel's offering. Immediately, Cain was jealous. Cain got envious because God was pleased with Abel, and he slew him. Because of that, God put the curse. He marked him and cast him out from his brethren. His name was Cain, and he turned him what you call the Canaanite now, the black man. A lot of you don't like it. Like it or not, that's the way it is. He drove him out. 
but he said he would protect him. He would mark him. So that, Now, what kind of mark can you put on somebody where you can see them afar off and want to kill them? Uh, that's what happened with their Cain and, Cain and Abel. From then, Adam and Eve had more children. Seth was one. Uh, they call Seth the godly line, but, you know, Seth's kids, they sin too. It kept getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, man got so sinful that in chapter 6, he looks upon man and it repented God that he had made man. He was sorry he'd created him. He said he's going to destroy them all from the face of the earth except for eight people. So he goes to Noah and he says, Noah, build an ark. Now until this day it had never rained on the face of the earth. The earth was watered by a mist. So for, it, for the skies to open up and rain was a laughable. Keep in mind, the deep was above them then because the earth had been moved through the deep where it was with Lucifer to under the deep. That's where it was then. That's when the floodgates of heaven opened up. That's when the gates of the deep opened up. It was right above the earth. Well, Noah built an ark. He took two of a kind of all the unclean beasts into the ark, male and female. Of the clean beast, he took seven two by two, male and female, seven. That's what they ate while they were there. And that's what they, uh, the other uh, animals that were unclean ate. He took eight people. He took Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah and his wife, and his son's wives. Now you say, well, the question has been asked, how did the black get in, get through the flood? Well, once again, I, if I was a guessing man, I would say that Noah was a Shemite. His wife was a Japhethite. The children were all a mix, just like uh, Cain and Abel would have been, of Sh uh, Japhethite and Shemite. And Ham's wife was black. Their son was called Canaan. And from there, you find every one of the black race comes from Ham. Comes from Cain, comes from Ham. They're called Hamanite, Hamites, Canaanites, whites are called Japhethites. Alright, you had, uh, he got them up in the ark, loaded them all aboard, and God shut the door. There were only eight. You can find in the New Testament, only eight survived the flood. Flooded out, rain, the the Ark finally landed after the earth was totally flooded. Every mountain, every critter, every beast, every man on the face of the earth was wiped out by the flood. None left. It was a worldwide flood, not a local flood. Okay, when they landed, they got out. Noah built him a, a vineyard. He made him a vineyard. Well, Noah gets drunk and passes out. And Ham, his younger son, committed sodomy on him. Well, he, in the previous chapter, he had just blessed them all, so he couldn't curse Ham, so he cursed Canaan, his boy. What he said of Canaan, which is a Canaanite or a Hamanite, the black race, a servant of servants shalt thou be. Shall be a servant to Japheth, shall be a servant to Shem. What it said of Japheth, said Japheth, means light colored. Japheth, the verb part, all mean, also means to be spread abroad. Hence, Japheth discovered everything there has been to be discovered, including walking on the moon. Japheth did that. Of Shem, it said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. As a result of that, every religion on the face of the earth came from Shem. Everyone, even Christianity. Jesus was a Jew. So, he set the bounds on them. God sent Ham, Noah and God sent Ham to Africa. He sent Japheth to Europe. He said for Shem to stay there in the Middle East and Asia. Hence you have the American Indian, the uh, Chinese, the Japanese, the uh, Jew, they're all Shemites. You know what the whites are and you know what the blacks are. You know what the Shemites are. That's what God said of them. He set the bounds. He didn't want them together. Why? Because they get together and they throw out God. Anytime you get a bunch of people together, they throw out God, they throw out God's word. Okay. Once they start multiplying, uh, the, sons, the sons of God, which are some angels, 
looked upon the daughters of men and saw that they were pleasant to look at. And they came down and fornicated with them. And giants were born of them. There were giants in the land in those days. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't fornicate with animals too because uh, you get the statues of a half goat and a half man or a half lion, a half man, a half horse. Where did all that come from? Hmm. Possible, very possible. The Bible said they looked on the daughters of men. Ain't no telling what else they looked on. But God saw that man was exceedingly uh, evil. So that is why God wiped out all of mankind and started with eight. And then from there, he wanted to start over. Like, once again, man gets together. They build a Tower of Babel. They want to try to get to heaven without God. That's what everybody wants to do, get to heaven without God. You're not going to get to heaven without God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. You got it? You won't get to heaven without God. Okay. Next we have, uh, you have the age of conscience. You have Job. You read the book of Job sometime. Job was a just and righteous man as to love the Lord and eschewed evil. Job is a type of the tribulation. You also had people like Abraham. Abraham, here comes Abraham. Age of conscience. There's no law. The law hadn't been given yet to Moses. So we're out of age of innocence. We're in age of conscience. Uh, you have a few great men in those at that age. God picks out Abraham because Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So God says of Abraham, you believe me, you're my friend. I'm going to set up nations from you. I'm going to, your sons, your descendants are going to be, all the nations of the earth will be blessed through them. So Abraham has Isaac. He has Jacob. But along with Isaac, though, he has a half-breed child called Ishmael, daughter of Hagar the Egyptian, half black, half Shemite. And uh, that's what you have. Uh, you have some half-breed Shemite, Hamite from Ishmael, and God said of the Arab, a wild man shall he be, his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. So here you have the start of the Jewish race, you have the start of the Muslim race, the A Arabs. The mixed race. Where if Abraham would have just been patient, you wouldn't have had that problem on Israel. They've hated Israel ever since. Okay, from Isaac comes Jacob. Jacob, God changes his name from Jacob, which is a surplanter, to Israel. And of him, he has 12 sons, which the 12 tribes are created by. The nation of Israel consists of the 12 tribes of the sons of Jacob, or Israel. They go into captivity. They go into the world, into captivity, into Egypt. Uh, read through. I can't tell you all about it. Uh, read it for yourself. King James Bible, only one to read. They in captivity 400 years. God raises up Moses to lead them out, to lead his people out. They, he leads the people out. He, show, he pours out plagues and abominations upon Pharaoh. He teaches Pharaoh he is the only true living God. He makes a point out of it. He hardened his heart so he could make a point out of it. He leads the children of Israel out into the wilderness. They threw the Red Sea. He did part the Red Sea, not the Sea of Reeds. It's the Red Sea. He wiped out the Egyptians in it. The children of Israel came through. But they got to murmuring. They, out in the wilderness, they didn't have all the niceties they had back in the world, Egypt. So they started whining and complaining. Really irritated God. So he said, I ain't going to let you into the promised land. He even had them bit by serpents. They, they got, mankind just can't go for long without turning on God. Well, he let Moses see the promised land. And then he buried Moses on the mountain. Joshua and Caleb led the children of Israel into the promised land. They, can't, they, they uh, conquered all the land that the, uh, the Hamites, the Canaanites, hadn't left. They conquered all the land back for Israel. Then God raised up judges to judge over the people. Then you have Samuel. You have a lot of the minor prophets. You have judges over the people. 
uh, Samuel, you had uh, Samson, quite a few. Read the Bible, it's there, and it's been, it's the truth. Uh, after that, the people wanted a king like the rest of the world had, so God let them have their king, which was Saul. But God's choice was King David. He raised up David to be a type. David was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in all three ways, is that he was a prophet, priest, and a king. And uh, Jesus Christ and King David had so many similarities. I read about David sometime. From there on you had many kings. Some are good, some are bad. Uh, Solomon built God the temple. The people kept becoming exceedingly evil. The kings did that which was wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And God finally put Israel into captivity. Now, at the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ had agreed with the Father and the Holy Spirit that if man needed a Savior, he would be that, and they would be the elect, preordained to be the sons of God upon their repentance and belief on the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus agreed before the foundations of the earth that he would do this if it needed to be done. He would come and become flesh, born of a virgin. He would be crucified, dead, and buried. We're getting to that. That is, it's tough, but it's sweet. Now, you had, you had Israel in captivity. You have all the book of the Maccabees. You have Daniel visions talked to Daniel about, shown to Daniel about the end of time. And he stopped him because he's going to let John tell you the rest over in Revelation. You get in there and it comes time that Jesus says it's time to God will be born. Jesus came. He split time in two, B.C., A.D., explain that one. He split time in two. He is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus came, born of a Virgin Mary. He grew up. Uh, God's hand was upon him. The Holy Spirit dwelt on him. He started preaching at age 30. He preached for three and a half years. He preached the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, and buried. The Jews would not accept him as their, their Messiah. He was crucified, dead, and buried. He rose from the dead three full days and three nights. He's in the heart of the grave. He was here for about 40 days on the face of the earth. Over 500 people saw him and witnessed him here. He ascended into heaven and now is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He is our priest at this time. He is soon to be our prophet. I mean, he's soon to be our king and our lord, our lord of lords and our king of kings. Right now, he is our priest. You don't need no catholic priest or anything from, you certainly don't need anything from the evil religion of Muslim. Islam, it is of the devil. You show me one Baptist or one Methodist, you say they're radicals. Show me the radical Methodist and ra ra radical Baptist. Well, they're too lazy to go kill somebody anyhow, I guess most of them, but they don't do that. And you don't see the Baptist churches standing up and rejoicing when somebody's murdered. But you see them doing it. Islam is evil. Always has been and always will be. God will destroy it in the end. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Thus comes the church age. We've been through the age of the law. We are now in the age of grace through faith, where a man is saved by grace through faith, plus or minus nothing. You repent, which means turn from your evil ways, and you turn to God, and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's how you see Jesus. That's how you spend eternity with God. Now, the church age is here. You go through all the church ages, you'll find them in Revelation 1. You'll find the seven church ages listed. We are now at the point of the tribulation. Tribulation is a time, a period of seven years. The last three and a half will be consisting of the seals, the trumpets, the vials, the wrath of God being poured out upon man. God is going to gather together the nations that he may pour out his wrath upon them. For my God is a jealous God. Yes, he is a God of love. Yes, he is the Lord of lords, but he is a jealous God and he is a God of war. When that happens, God will pour out his wrath upon this earth. They will still not repent from their sins. The Lord Jesus Christ will come back in the air. The church, the bride, will see him. He, they will be caught up in the air. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 17. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through, I think, 58. Check it out. Look it up. 
He will receive his bride. From there, all hell breaks loose out on the earth, the last of the tribulation, people being slaughtered by the hundreds. You are saved in the tribulation by grace plus works. You have the testimony of Jesus Christ, and you keep the law, and you lose your head if necessary. You end no more grace through faith in the tribulation. After the tribulation... I saw heaven open, chapter 19, and the white horse rider is Jesus Christ this time. He comes back with two armies, the bride, which is us. He comes back with the Old Testament saints, and he wreaks havoc on this earth. He lands, everything in front of him burns. Turn, I mean flesh melts off of bones before they can hit the ground, eyes out of their sockets. Jesus defeats the Antichrist, the false prophet who Satan has set up. In the tribulation, Michael and the archangels fight against Satan and his angels. Michael and his angels prevail and cast Satan down into the earth. Satan is cast down into the body of the Antichrist, and that sucker sets up and says, I am he, I am Jesus. Well, Jesus Christ puts an end to that in Revelation 19 when he comes back and destroys all that. The Antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. Satan is cast into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. Why? Because it is written. The reason you don't know it, you haven't read what is written. Uh, from there on, Jesus cleanses out Jerusalem. Jesus Christ sits down on the throne of David in Jerusalem. Every camera, everybody sees him. He will, you don't need grace through faith. You can see him. You have faith for what you can't see. Uh, Everybody sees him, and for 1,000 years he rules with a, root, he, with a rod of iron. In other words, the law comes back into effect, and you will do what he says to do. Us, the bride of Christ, will serve him. I hope he gives me Hollywood. I'd love to, <laughs> I'd love to tell on them every time they get out of line in Hollywood. I'd like to haul them up. Hollywood, you and you, you love the cameras, don't you? Fame and the glory, you ain't going to love hell. You won't. You better repent. Now, after that thousand year millennial reign, Satan is loosed for a short time. There'll still be people on the earth that won't bow down to Jesus. They'll act like they do, and when they get off behind out there somewhere, they'll, they'll talk about him and hate him. Uh, Satan will gather together those forces from Gog and Magog and from the four corners of the earth, and he'll come against Jesus at Jerusalem. And this time Jesus don't do the fight and God, the Father, rains down fire out of heaven and destroys them. Satan then is cast in to the lake of fire. Satan is never cast into hell, he's cast into the lake of fire. All right, after, he is, after Satan is cast into the lake of fire, then here comes the white throne judgment. Uh, 2 Peter, you find out where the earth melts with a fervent heat. The earth is melted off while everybody stands out there in space, us seated around the throne, us saying amen to all the judgments passed down at the white throne judgment where the dead get, sea gives up their dead, the graves up, gives up their lost dead. The people from the millennium will be there, the people from the tribulation. So not everybody is going to face the lake of fire. Some of them will be made on their works because they've kept the law during the millennium or the tribulation. Uh, but chances ain't good at the white throne judgment. I want the shed blood of one righteous man, Jesus Christ, who took away my sins, took them away, removed them, and remembered them no more. Now, after that, the white throne judgment, the lost dead are cast into the lake of fire. New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven from God. It's 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles tall, 1,500 miles deep, and it has mansions in it. Not homes, as the perversions read in my father's house are many rooms. Baloney. In my father's house are many mansions. My father ain't don't own Marriott. He owns it all. He has mansions in New Jerusalem. Now, the Jew will eventually rule the earth. I would say the Gentiles, the solar system. Uh... We will govern. We will rule with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will go back to be one in one as he was in the beginning. One in one. One spirit. And we, we will have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now here's what I want to tell you. He chose people that were honest. Now, 
I have went through this with you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to check me? Are you going to see if I told you what's the truth? What are you going to do about it? I hope that you will get this. There is one thing you definitely need to do. You need to get down on your knees before God Almighty. You can do it by yourself or wherever you are and say, Lord God, you need to tell him. Let him know that you know you're a sinner. Let him know you deserve hell. Ask him to save your sorry soul. Ask him. Repent. First you must repent. There is no forgiveness without repentance. There is no forgiveness without repentance. None. Repent. Turn away from your evil ways. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Save that soul. Have that spirit born again. You're a three-part being. You're a body, soul, and a spirit. Get your soul saved while there's still time in the age of grace through faith. It's the best decision you will make for eternity. Jerry Martin Gibson, CSA. You get my information from the King James Authorized 1611 Bible. I was raised by Paul Ormby, who taught me very much about it. Miss Florence Sumrauer, my aunt, my uncles. They were Bible believers. They had King James Bibles. I learned the Word of God, believed it. I also learned from Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. I learned from Dr. Clarence Larkin, the Reverend Clarence Larkin. I learned a lot from Bob Jones Sr. And I learned the most of all from the Holy Spirit that lives in me when I was born again to be a son of God. This is Jerry Gibson with the CSA. May God bless and keep you. Amen. How will they know in who to believe? How will they believe except they receive? How shall they hear unless they have a preacher?